My name is Daisha Clay. I'm the audio librarian here at Classical 91.7. While I'm a real librarian, I have a deep, dark secret. I know very little about classical music. I grew up listening to rock. And I know something about jazz. But when it comes to classical... The thing is, I want to learn. And as it turns out, I work with people who know a lot about classical music. Every week on this show, one of my coworkers will give me a homework assignment, a piece of classical music they think I should know, and then we'll discuss it. Come learn with me in the classical classroom. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the classical classroom. I'm Daisha Clay, and today my instructor is a repeat customer. Mr. Keith Weber, who is a Grammy-nominated producer, director of music at Salem Evangelical Lutheran Church, and artistic director of Gray Song Incorporated. Keith, welcome back to the program. Hi, Desha. How are you? I'm great. Very pleased to be here. What What are you going to be teaching me today? You seem to have a burning desire to teach me about this piece I do. of music. I do. So. <laughs> well, once we did the last one, and I, I understood how interesting this format is, uh, I thought of a whole bunch of things that it would be fun to discuss. Uh, this one in particular, this is a, it's an American concerto for soprano. Basically, that was written in the late 40s to an American poet's prose work called Knoxville, Summer of 1915. James Agee, right? Yeah, Yeah. uh, A.G., I think he pronounced it. Oh, A.G., okay, sorry. But he um, is from Knoxville and was working through what it was like to grow up as as somebody special and artistic and sensitive in the Old South. Mm -hmm. And so the piece is a dreamlike, kind of wandering reminiscence about the beauties of family and the the wonders of the world, kind of from from a kid's dreamy perspective. Mm -hmm. But then also suddenly facing all of the questions that we all do about, but what what does it all mean? And and the, the core question here is, why won't anybody tell me who I am? <laughs> they all love me. They treat me well. It's all very thingy, and we're out sitting on blankets and blah, blah, blah. But no one will tell me who I am. Hmm. The, the, it's the, the pain of being isolated, even amidst a very, very large family, which is a, it's a common experience for lots of us. Sure. So this whole thing is a whole coming of age, not only of the composer and the poet, but the way it was brought about. Um, mm-hmm. This was right after the war. Eleanor Steber was a soprano from Wheeling, West Virginia. Mm-hmm. And she was the first bona fide, big time international star who was an American soprano, who defined a kind of a no nonsense, really straightforwardly musical and generous approach to singing. Mm-hmm. And so she commissioned this, she paid for this to be written. And wow. she sang the premiere in 1948 with the Boston Symphony Orchestra mm-hmm. and Serge Kusevitsky. They were all known for their adventuresome mm-hmm. commissioning work. And she recorded it. And her recording of it, it's sensational in its directness yeah. and its understanding of what's going on. And so it's one of these commissions that, uh, you know, you always hope that there's a second performance of something and a third performance. Well, this has entered the repertory. This piece is now immortal. It's not just great and successful and interesting. It revealed something about the truth in the universe hmm. and is such high quality, both orchestral writing and vocal writing, that it's a core. It's just got it's kind a core, of it's a all core. of the... Right components there. It's I think that's a core of the literature, yes. That's a cool way to put it that it, it brought forth some truth in the universe that maybe hadn't been right. That's right. stated before. That's right. It asked out loud this really uncomfortable question. Yeah. And gave and and not not necessarily answered it, mm-hmm. but asked it so well mm-hmm. that it resonates. Which gives other right. people permission to also ask Correct. that question. Correct. In fact, there's uh, people uh, resolve this piece in their own minds across a wide range, mm-hmm. which is a sign of a great piece of art. That's really cool. And people have different reactions to it. But but no one doubts its 
supreme excellence mm -hmm. on a whole host of fronts. You've got the literature, you've got right. the, the, literature, the, the music, the you've music got the itself, singing. You've the... got the orchestration, you know, and the fact that it's unusual, it's a, it's a soprano concerto. Uh, mm -hmm. It's 15 minutes of solid, straight on, full out singing. Tell, uh, tell me about Samuel Barber. Uh, he, what was his part in this? Well, he just took the commission. He was uh, hired by her mm -hmm. to do the writing, which he did uh, from Italy. He was doing a well, – he spent a lot of time in Europe, although he's an American composer. Mm -hmm. As a lot of people had to do, you have to make your name in Europe before you come home. That's how we knew you were a big deal. Yeah. But he became in this piece – uh, people will tell you that this is his most American – voice. Mm -hmm. He had, uh, it was a synthesis of all sorts of things, beautiful French ideas, beautiful Italian ideas. All of his music is conscientiously Italian mm -hmm. in its, uh, in all of the instructions and a lot of the details, a lot of the, the way that the lines are, uh, what amounts to modern bel canto. Mm -hmm. It's that same long limbed and vocally right. aware thing, but it is so distinctly American here. And yeah, yeah, also people know uh, Samuel Barber from his universally known piece called uh, The Adagio for Strings. Oh, well, I better listen to that one. Yeah, yeah. Universally known except for me. Well, well maybe I've heard it. I don't you've know. probably heard it. Yeah. I bet you've heard it. It's... But you, you touched on something just a second ago that I've been curious about. Mm -hmm. You talked about the... Um, about Barber's, mm -hmm. I guess, his, his notation and such being conscientiously... Right. Italian. Right. Why is it that musical notation is written in Italian? Well, because that's where, that's where all the good musicians come from. <laughs> it's where the music comes from. <laughs> it's where they it's where they figured out how to sing really well. <laughs> yeah. huh. And it's where, you know, it's the same thing with sculpture and, you know, hmm. and the fact that the Roman Catholic Church is still based there and doing I mean it's there is a an unmistakable flavor and grandness to being Italian, genuinely mm -hmm. Italian, and it's it's a it's a something that a lot of American composers who want to connect with the roots of Western music often end up with a root squarely in Italy. That in, is, due to this day, that's, oh, yeah, yeah. that's the case. Oh sure, sure. I kind of love that idea that that has not changed. Oh no, yeah, yeah. you know, right, right. Since since. Way back right. to, you know, the great composers. Because, you know, American yeah. classical music is what? Not that old. Yeah, 100, 150, yeah. 200. And in terms of being highly refined, no more than 100 years. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is reaching back to connect. Cool. Well, let's hear some of it. I'm, I've, I've, I'm curious now. Yeah, he gets. Uh, I love the the opening before the words start. Uh, Ag and the score uh, sets it up by saying, "We are talking now of summer evenings in Knoxville, Tennessee, in the time when I lived there, so successfully disguised to myself as a child." Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. And away we go. Yeah. With. Uh, an opening section that's all imagery, that's mm. all what it's like to hear everything and see everything as it's going by. Yeah. Um, this opening lyrical business, which is beautifully contrapuntal and um, freely melodic. Contrapuntal, tell me what that means. Or that means things obey uh, harmonic rules. Okay. That J.S. Bach came up with. Uh, the Bach. <laughs> and the, the Bach, yes. Yeah. That have developed over the centuries. Contrapuntal rules, meaning the movement of voices in relation to one another. I see. There are standards that developed, and people, good composers, obey them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Here's. It has become the time of evening. Oh, there's Eleanor, yes. Very straightforward. Rocking gently and talking gently. Nicely legato. And watching the street. And every word. 
you know, one of the big rubs of American singers is they sing English like a foreign language. Well, she, <laughs> well, she doesn't. <laughs> yeah. It sounds absolutely genuine. A male writer wrote uh-huh. this, uh-huh. and this female singer right. was so moved to sing it, right. which maybe speaks a, even more to the universality of... Indeed. And because it's quite beyond gender. We, but yeah. Men and women, we all had this experience growing yeah. up in the South. Of this, it's just, it was beautiful and interesting. It's the sound of hollow iron music on the asphalt. Mm-hmm. Like, here we go, people in pairs talking about the environment. And, And how we young artist types always find everything found everything interesting, <laughs> yeah, and we're trying to find the connections, even if there weren't any. Mm-hmm. This is one of my favorite lines. She says the taste hovering over them of vanilla, strawberry, pasteboard, and starched milk, <laughs> which I think is the graphics on an old ice cream carton. That's yeah, I can taste it. Yeah. Mm. The, the language he yeah. uses is... Yeah, the image upon them of lovers and horsemen. It's just the graphics. It's just old-timey advertising. Mm-hmm. Squared with clowns in hueless amber. Hueless amber. It's it's perfect in its image. It describes it perfectly. Uh-huh. Now, the oboe takes over. We're back to this opening material... And he finishes out the, what is essentially the first movement of this concerto with a nice rhapsody for the orchestra. And a rhapsody is just when yeah, just musicians kind of, kind of right. go off. You take the main theme and run with it. Basically, it's the guitar solo. That's right. That's yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And, you know, this piece, uh, uh, it's challenging for everybody involved. It's so wonderfully difficult to perform. You know, you learn this piece, you feel like you learn Mm some. Now, here comes the second movement, which is all the loud business. And, And you start to hear the clanking and the... Not just the pretty noises of the old South, but the, the, the crazy awful. Yeah. Squeaking, buzzing, panicky, freaked is, out. Is this sort of a tone poem? This is, yes, absolutely. Okay. And it, yes, it's, I learned it's, something. <laughs> <laughs> it's a total tone poem. This is this opening thing that, that paints the narrative that she's just about to flesh out. Okay about a streetcar raising its iron moan, stopping, starting. It has even has a word nobody ever heard of, s- terrorist. What does that mean? Uh, loud and horrible. Uh. Starting, <laughs> Rousing and raising again. And then here comes a little staccato section of bleak spark crackling. It's almost too much content to take in as it all goes by. It's, it's a piece that you live with. Tell me again when this was written. 19, well, written in 47, premiered in 48. Okay. Yeah, right after the war. And she was uh, at the very beginning of her, well, in the, right, right in the middle of her career. She was a big deal. Was for 20 years a prima donna at the Met and all over the world. And, and this signature, oh, listen to this sound. It's now silvery and full and beautiful. Now, here comes the phrase of phrases, the, the eternal and fabulous thing here. She now sings the line, Now is the night... One blue dew. There's no telling what that means. But here's how she sings it. Yeah. 
it's a uh, <laughs> it's sensationally sung. And now we uh, modulate into what's essentially the final movement. Picking up on this blue do and starting to talk about her father, or in his case, his father. Yeah. And they all of them, A.G. and Barber and Miss Steber, had father issues, hmm. um, which is interesting to yeah. note in retrospect. I mean, who doesn't have father issues? But <laughs> <laughs> Anybody but. <laughs> with a father has some kind of father issue. When I love this, the low on the length of lawns, a frailing of fire who breathes. To me, that's a um, fire, fireflies, lightning it's bugs. Such yeah. Luscious language. Yeah. It's like yeah. so, but but also um, yeah. the economy of of words. Right. Is, is Correct. Pretty. It's it's extraordinarily uh, dense. Yeah, it's extraordinarily dense yeah. and. Clear. Yeah, no word is right. wasted. I mean. Right. It strikes me that this sounds very um, kind of contemporary, a little bit experimental. Mm -hmm. Was it so for its time? Sort of, in a lot, in some ways. Some of the chromaticism here was mm -hmm. was avant-garde for the time. It's mm -hmm. late romantic, it, but it's not it's not as weird as a lot of stuff that was cooking. I'm struck by uh, Miss Stevers pointedness and clarity it's a it's become now stand what we, we, we can be proud of as americans is that we have synthesized all the old european singing styles mm -hmm. and we have placed on top of it this certain no nonsense and now this business this is really beautiful a little bit of a waltz, kind of an offbeat waltz. And now we have this picture of the rough, wet grass in the backyard, and everybody's sitting there on quilts. Mm -hmm. Everybody's there. All the people I know and love, nobody's talking. They don't talk about anything. It's just hanging out. So as this now starts to get hotted up, this final movement, we realize that it's a piece that's written for a full lyric soprano, um, which Eleanor is. She will. It's it's going to take some horsepower, <laughs> 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 of which she has in spades. It's that the big silvery. Gorgeousness of sound. Yeah, she can really top, belt it out. Yeah, top to bottom, but it's never shrill or barky mm -hmm. or affected. It's just now. Oh, now she has a little bit of a trippy vision. The stars are wide and alive. They seem each like a smile of great sweetness. So she's starting to wonder and notices interesting things like all her people are larger bodies than hers <laughs> or his. <laughs> That's one of my favorite lines. Which, when I was 12, was true. <laughs> <laughs> Still true for me. <laughs> I know what that means, too. Gentle and meaningless. Like the voices of sleeping bird. Mm -hmm. And then, here's the artistic family. Everybody's still living at home. This is so current. <laughs> One's a musician. <laughs> and then here comes a big friend. Now, 
here comes the core question. And we get some chromatics and some half steps going on now here. By some chance, here we are. And who shall ever tell the song? <laughs> you do the best hand dancing. That's I wish you guys could yeah. see it. Yeah, is who's, who's going to ever say how horrible this is <laughs> to be so wonderfully comfortable at home and just not getting it? <laughs> oh, that, that is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And then this last coda, just put your seatbelt on because okay, here she it. goes. This is... Um, a prayer to start for all the good people who are genuinely good. Uh, May God bless them. You have to be a full lyric soprano to actually pull this one off. She's clearly passionate about this piece. (laughs) She's, I mean... Yeah, well, you know what, it's, it's... She's responsible for it. Yeah. It's one of it's. There's so many variables in any commission project. Mm-hmm. Like, will will the librettist be as inspired as the composer? Mm-hmm. Will will anyone connect with it? Will, blah blah blah. There's, and I can count on you know, both hands the commissions that have had this kind of synergy and synthesis that just completely come together. Yeah, a commission has to be such a such a different creative process i mean mm-hmm. like you know um yeah. most most of the music yeah. that i've learned about is i i yeah. i gather has been born out of just a sort of inspiration right. or right but well, most stuff is bought and paid for one way or another mm-hmm. if not by commission by someone being on someone's staff you know mm-hmm. But there's something that's sort of less organic about yeah. a piece that's commissioned. It's right. you know, it's, right. here's an assignment. Make this. Yeah, well, that's one yeah. of the, that's one of the challenges. Yeah. Now here she is back to the opening material. You know, after a little while, I'm taking to put to bed. Soft sleep. This is the color here. <laughs> I study this woman singing. I do. How does that does that inform your your organ work? Oh yeah, way? sure. Oh sure. I try to imitate her lines really? with the keyboard, absolutely. Huh. And I teach it to singers too. So here we go. Are you ready? Mm. They treat me as one familiar and loved, but will not, will not, not now, not ever will not ever tell me who I am. And now she can actually pull this off. This whole last phrase, which is very high, is marked pianissimo. Mm -hmm. She can do it. question out there. 
but will not ever tell me who I am. And back into the rhythm of the night. Easy life mm -hmm. that has no information. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and isn't that all of our lives? <laughs> I mean, not necessarily easy, yeah. but no information, yeah, what's no a, guidebook. No. <laughs> These days it's easier to get information. I suppose that's true. Um, but I mean, you know, sort of um, existential information. Right, right. No one gives that to you. That's not really. That's correct. They try to, but... And there you have it. It's a whole journey in mm -hmm. emotion and thought and color painting. and It's written so perfectly well for this type of voice, the type mm -hmm. of voice that she was. Um, well, it's such a simple... The the content, the story, mm -hmm. sort of. It's almost one of those moments in life that could pass unnoticed right. if you didn't take the time right. to, to put right. it into words. It, yeah, it heightens perception. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very simple story with lots and lots of details, which is one of the lessons of the piece, is to pay attention. Well, I guess that's go what ahead art and, is. Yeah, go ahead and look at them and taste them and smell them and describe them. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, this has really been enlightening. So, like I, I would, this is one of those pieces of music that I, yeah. I really don't think that I would have. Yeah, you have wouldn't have. To. No, not unless you developed a soprano fetish like I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I can listen to. In fact, I have, on occasion, sat and played that blue dew mm -hmm. phrase mm -hmm. forty, fifty times mm -hmm. in succession, just to savor it and just to hear how on earth the breath worked through that. And to you know, I'm so I'm one of those freaky people. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't gonna say it. <laughs> um, <laughs> But there you have it. Wow. So you essentially did for me what James, tell me how to pronounce A -G. it. A-G. A-G. Yeah. What, what he did for that moment. You brought it to light. Oh, you, oh nice. you fleshed it out and gave it color for me. Keith, thank you for coming back onto the program. It was great to see you. And well, I, I hope you come back again. Well, you can count on it. Yeah. And everybody, thanks for tuning in. If you have questions that you would like to hear addressed on The Classical Classroom, please send me an email at dclay at classical917.org, and we will catch you next time.